opening half. Clay County took charge, and in the second half, really kind of cruised to that victory. Belfry and Knott County, a little bit of a different situation. That game had everything that you can possibly dream of in a ball game. Sure did, Keith. And, you know, Belfry led at the end of the first quarter, 16-14. As a matter of fact, they had the lead of some 12-4 early in the contest. But problems arose as Knott County Central really got it going. And the big guy on the inside, Brad Arrington, with 18, Sonny Huff, came off the bench late with 18. And uh, there's going to be some, perhaps, you know, you might have some matchup problems with a little bit of the size for Belfry. But in talking with Coach Bobby Osborne, he feels his team can match up very well with Belfry. And uh, even though this is a consolation game of sorts, you know, this could be the preview of the 15th region final, as in fact it was last year. Well, I think the Wildcats had a little bit of trouble last night with the speed of Clay County's team. Belfry last night really looked strong in the opening half of their ball game, then seemed to lose some composure after that point, and not County. What about the confidence factor that they got after that? They are really rolling. Of course, they are here on their home court. She's on the home court ready for basketball action. One of these days, that little lady's going to break somebody's heart. <laughs> well, we're just about ready to get this one underway. Belfry, of course, will be in the traveling red. The Wildcats will have the home white and blue tonight. Matthew Baker, only a freshman. I don't, I can't remember a freshman starting for a Bobby Osmond club. I know Todd May played a lot as a freshman, but, but did didn't, not start. Didn't start. Well, Belfry wastes no time opening up. Steve Staten gets the first two points of this ball game, and quickly the Pirates are up two to nothing. Belfry will open up in a man-to-man. -man. Hager and Kaiser, that should be a good matchup. Matthew Baker down the lane, sweeping left-hand hook is good for two points. Good cut through, Keith, and good look, the realization for the feet. Dayton looking at a matchup zone. Looks like they're going to go a boxing chaser. Got the chaser on J.J. Hilton. That's Jeremy Johnson going with it. Oh, no, Keith, maybe they're in the man. Well, I guess you're right. Looks as if, though, they were in the boxing chaser to open up, but it is a man. But you have to send some cutters through to pick up whether it is the zone or the man. Good, strong move by Steve Staten that time off the baseline. At nine points. And the win over Hazard. Of course, Hazard took Belfry right to the wire, 63-60. Keith, you see early a lot of pressure on the Shelby Valley guards as out front going to be tough sledding, I think, for Kaiser and Johnson because they don't have the experience they had there that, of course, Hager and Hilton had. Here's J.J. Hilton, first try from the field, won't go. Offensive board, Steve Staten, and it is good. And right now, it is Shelby Valley 2, Steve Staten 6. Kid has played timely for Coach Raymond Justice and had 11 points in the win and run the loss to Valley. Matthew Baker off the baseline for two points. It's Baker and Staten one-on-one. -on -one. Here's the transition game that Belfry wants to get in. Hilton underneath for a quick two. Unbelievable quick pace to this game, Jim. Belfry last night, you get a good look there. It's Raymond Justice, but last night, Belfry, 0 of 15 from the three-point stripe in the second half. Underneath, Bobby Keys gets the lay-in. Shelby Valley running it along with Belfry. And we're going to get our first personal foul of the ball game against Rodney Kaiser, number 20, reaching out. Bobby Keyes with the bucket for Shelby Valley, one of the leading scorers in this tournament, had 21 and went over Breathitt County, 16 last night. Johnson and Hilton, good matchup. Baseline, turnaround, Pinson, no good. Thomas with the offensive board, blocked by Baker. And the Wildcats will come away with it. Baker, the play of a freshman, he was really maybe a little bit out of sync last night against Clay County, but playing lights out here. And one of the cornerstones of the Shelby Valley Pro. Off balance that time for Jeremy Johnson wouldn't go. 
Two on two. J.J. Hilton takes it strong to the basket. Belfry up by four. Ten to six. Good play on both ends. Rodney Kaiser looking underneath. Baker didn't see the pass. He's going for the rebounding position and good idea, just communication wasn't there. J.J. Hilton, two-point jumper, and quickly, Belfry has opened up a six-point lead. Belfry getting the open shots out of the transition, and that's what's worried Coach Bobby Osborne here. Kaiser for three. In and out. Bobby Keys with the rebound. Had it stripped away. Still loose. And Belfry is going to toss it out of bounds, so it will belong to Shelby Valley. Sean Hager diving for that ball. A little slow getting up. He's got a thigh bruise, Keith, and uh, of course you couldn't tell it with that effort there, but he and Bobby Keys getting a little tangled up. We have our first substitution into the game, Jim. No surprise, it's Jamie Roberts. Gave his team a big lift with 16 points. Wildcats toss it away. It'll turn over to Belfry. Four minutes remaining in the first period of play. Belfry leading by six, 12 to six. Staten. Hager on the move. Good dish to Thomas and rejected by Jeremy Johnson. Easy run out, Jamie Roberts, and that is going to be goaltending against Staten. Well, Roberts quickly makes an impact with two points. And with three minutes, 47 seconds remaining in the first quarter, we'll have our first timeout. Belfry leading over Shelby Valley, 12 to 8. Confidence is a big part of succeeding in business today. And as Eastern Kentucky supplier of quality Caterpillar equipment and service, Wayne Supply has built a reputation on the confidence of our customers. Confidence in knowing we'll come through with just the right equipment for the right job, big or small. And confidence in knowing that everything Wayne sells is backed by the best and most complete parts and service support to keep you on the job with less downtime. Whatever your needs in Eastern Kentucky, contact your nearest Wayne Supply branch. Wayne Supplies Confidence. On January 12th, a farmer has been drawn by an irresistible force. Drove his truck off the road, through a field, and into a Pepsi billboard, changing the course of cola history forever. To find out how, watch the big game on January 26th. a quick first four minutes of this ball game you can see the rebounding edge Belfry six to four over Shelby Valley by two early on a couple of turnovers I think maybe for Shelby Valley the reason they're down here JJ Hilton in the middle of the lane left it short Bobby Keys brings it away Wildcats looking to run now Bad pass in the middle. Johnson picks it back up. All the way down. Laid it up. Got the lay in. Jeremy Johnson had a good game against Clay County last night, so he picks up right where he left off. Surely so, Keith. And Coach Bobby Osborne talked about the fact his move to the point guard second half of the coveting holds game has given his team a lift. Steve Staten won't go. Jamie Roberts brings it away. 5'10 Dynamo Roberts. Here's Kaiser down the lane. His shot will not go because he was fouled by Sean Hager. One of the few times you'll find teams in Eastern Kentucky with a common opponent like Covenant Holmes, Keith. Covenant Holmes beat Shelby Valley rather handily in the Lee's Famous Recipe Classic, while Belfry managed to defeat the number five team in the state in the Clay County Invitational Tournament. Well, Baker couldn't get us to go that time. I think you're going to see J.J. Hilton try to move down inside and post up. Here's Phillips into the game. Hager looking for three. High Archer. And Sean Hager had some kind of arch on that ball. Coach Justice talked about the fact that this is a pride game for his team. Really not in sync. Not being able to put four quarters together. 
Here's Bobby Keys. Good dish from Matthew Baker that time for the two points. Keith, I like this 6'5 junior, Bobby Keys. Gives you a lot of effort on the inside. He really wasn't intimidated at all by Clay County yesterday evening. 15 to 12. Belfry up by three. Two minutes remaining in the first period. Here's Hilton for a jump shot. Now, J.J. is starting to heat up in this ball game quickly. He has eight points in this first quarter. Took him down low and then flashed him up high. Johnson couldn't stay with him. Jeremy Johnson looking underneath. Stolen away by Staten. Roberts took a pretty good lick down low. No call. Here's a steal by Shelby Valley. If they can hold on to it, they do. And the run out looking for Roberts, and he can't hold on. Yeah, he does. And then makes a bad pass. Two on one, Hilton off to Staten. Good lay-in. Nice assist from J.J. Hilton that time, and it's a seven-point lead, 19 to 12. Those two guys, the bulk of the load as Staten with eight. Also, J.J. Hilton with eight. Team with a seven-point lead. Matthew Baker from the feed of Bobby Keys. Sweet little southpaw touch there by the freshman, and Bobby Osborne said he just has too much talent to be on the pines. A lot of guys will be brought along slowly in that situation, but not Matthew Baker. J.J. Hilton is not only going to get the basket, he is going to get the foul, and it'll be a three-point opportunity. He has really caught fire in the opening quarter. J.J. Hilton approaching 20, or rather, yeah, 2,600, 2,600 points in a high school career. J.J. Hilton there ranked probably a pretty much of a surety. First team all state at 36 versus number four Ballard just a week ago in the LIT. Well, we're seeing a little bit of full court pressure now. Phillips picking up on Jeremy Johnson. Johnson just missed having it picked off. Baker does, however. Here's Hilton in the lead and Kaiser steals it away. Both teams looking to go in the up-tempo. Really, Belfry forcing Shelby Valley in the up-tempo. Wildcats banging the boards, but can't get it. Pirates looking to run again. Staten may have walked, and he did. Good call. Now, well, 25 seconds. Let's see if the Wildcats will go for a last shot. Turnover is a big key. The Wildcats with six. Only three for Belfry, and Wildcats trailing by eight. Johnson puts it up from the free throw line and gets it. Six seconds left. Hager running it down. All the way and was hacked by Rodney Kaiser. Two seconds remaining. See Coach Bobby Osborne up there in the bottom of your screen pleading with Kaiser to not commit the foul in that situation, but... Sean Hager quick on quick, Keith. I think if he doesn't make the foul there, Hager goes in for the uncontested layup because Belfry had the floor spread in that situation for that move. Sean Hager uh, struggling a little bit from the line in his last couple of evenings. Hager's second attempt down the way. He gets one out of two. And the Wildcats will toss it the length of the floor. Two seconds remaining. It will fall out of bounds. Well, after one quarter complete, it is Belfry leading Shelby Valley 23 to 16. Hello, I'm Coach Rick Patino, and I want to invite you to join Ralph Hacker, Rob Bromley, and me this week on the Rick Patino Show. We'll look back at the latest UK basketball matchup with game highlights, player reaction, game analysis, and a look ahead to the Cats' next big game. So for the complete picture of UK basketball, tune in to the Rick Pitino Show. Sunday on your mountain television, WYMT. the gold with WYMT, your mountain television, your Winter Olympic station.
Well, what a quarter it was. 23 to 16, Belfry leading. Big quarter for J.J. Hilton. J.J. Hilton with 11 points in that first frame, and he caught fire along with Stephen Staten. And, you know, Scott Staten is here at the game and sort of bringing Stephen along here. Jamie Roberts down the lane, had it blocked from behind, still fighting for it. It is out of bounds off of Belfry, so Roberts doing a good job of keeping it alive. Belfry shooting 66%. He's 10 of 15 from the field. While Shelby Valley, 8 of 14 for 57%. Matthew Baker down the lane, won't go. Pinson back into the game with a rebound. Staten off the baseline, and Phillips is called for traveling. What kind of trouble do you have getting up for a consolation game, Jim? Some teams might have a problem with that. I, you know, I think in this situation here, it's a unique opportunity for the players to be on live TV, play against tough competition. Um, I would think our consolation game uh, brings the best to the fore. Well, sometimes you just have to have that good mental preparation. I know that's what you and I always do. Oh, yeah. I'm mental and you prepare. <laughs> Bobby Keys at the free throw line, shooting two. Crowd starting to file in here. Yep. Morton Combs Athletic Complex. Bobby Keyes looking for his sixth point. Won't get it. He averages 12 a game. Baker in the offensive board would not go down, and Belfry will come away with it. Staten on the run. Pulls it up off the glass. Beautiful shot by Steve Staten. This kid is playing lights out. His 10th point. Had 10 in a big win over Williamson. Wildcats going around the horn. Baker in the lane. Good turnaround hook shot. Matthew Baker has used both hands, left and right, accordingly in this game. And the sweet little half hook shot, too. Both teams cutting real well to the basket off the picks. Really dissecting the man to man. Get a look at Baker picking up the personal foul that time underneath. Averages seven points and seven rebounds a contest. I got a feeling that this Shelby Valley team is a team that's trying to get better. Thomas misses the free throw. By the way, speaking of Shelby Valley, I do want to mention my friend Lee Burke, who is the band director at Shelby Valley, who is not here tonight. Lee is somewhat under the flu block and couldn't make the tournament, but I know he's watching, so special hello to him. Now well, that goes. You see referee Rick Lintry there. Officials for the game, Mike Goins and Rick Lintry. Goins with the basketball there on your screen. Belfry Pirates ranked number one in the 15th region for some three years in a row. Also the top 15 in the state this year. Knocked out last year in the Sweet 16 by the Greenup County Musketeers. And what was round. considered an upset. Yep. Benson had it stripped away. Here's Staten. Not going to get the roll, and it is going to be out of bounds off of Shelby Valley. Keith, you talked about, you know, how easily can you get up for the consolation game. Raymond Justice was pretty adamant that his team needs to get fired up and get going. This is a pride game for them, and I think you can see Belfry's ready to go here in this one. Phillips with a good fadeaway. 27 to 19. Belfry up with a nine-point lead at this point. Phillips, 5'11", senior, one of three players on the floor that have played quarterback in football and heady, heady type performer. Six minutes to go, first half of play. Johnson looking away from the trap. Bobby Keys underneath. He and Baker trying to pass it among each other, kicked out of bounds by Belfry. Shelby Valley starting only one senior. And the inexperience perhaps showed a little bit last night, but not right now. Jeremy Johnson is going to pick up the foul from Pinson that time. Johnson did a beautiful little drop step to get open to the basket. 
Jeremy Johnson, the leader of this club, averaging 14 points, five assists, and six rebounds a contest. Played as a freshman for the Dorton Wildcats. Absolutely. Coach Gene Tackett and the Dorton Wildcats having a great tradition there. And then the Virgie Eagles and Bob Osmond, so they kind of combined, kept the blue and white of the old Virgie school, and then took the Wildcats name from Dorton School. Kind of meeting in the middle. Keith, crowd beginning to file in. We're going to have a good crowd on hand for the championship. Nothing but net for Chris Phillips. Belfry has forged a 10-point lead, and now, Jim, they come full court with pressure. Chris Phillips can give them the punch offensively or defensively off the bench at 11 in a big win versus Ravenswood, West Virginia. Johnson off the baseline. He is not going to get the shot, but the foul is going to be on Pinson, who, as I have it, could be entering into foul, foul trouble. Is on Joey at his first. And it is his third in the ball game, so Pinson is going to be coming to the Belfry bench as we see Thomas check back in for him. Jeremy Johnson, four points in the game. Looking to add to that, and he does. Shelby Valley was really lethargic in the opening quarter of last night's game against Clay County, Jim, but they posted a tremendous comeback before the halftime. They did, and uh, narrowed the gap to 36-25, but a big third frame by Clay County, and the Clay County defense just proved too much. Second free throw will not go. Wildcats in a man-to-man. Johnson and Hilton has been a good matchup. Jeremy knocking that pass away. This game started off at such a fast pace that it is now somewhat dwindled down compared to what it was. Once again, they're sending Hilton down low. They come up on a kind of a high post to get a pick, but trying to post him up down there against Johnson. Well, they got Thomas posted that time, and Matthew Baker is going to draw the foul. Foul on Matthew Baker is second team six. And it's going to be number two on Matthew. Just the Sixteen foul will not be in the bonus till the seventh team foul this year. Johnson knocking it away from Hilton. Good help defense there. JJ open this time off the baseline and he nails the ten footer. Hilton has been a much hotter shooter. Here's Jamie Roberts all the way. Couldn't get the lay in. And Hager is going to be fouled at half court. Looks like Rodney Kaiser, number 20, is going to be the guilty party. Last time down the floor, they tried, Belfry tried to post J.J. Hilton down low. They got it to him. The good help defense warmed him. He gave it up, Keith, and then moved without the basketball. Got down to an open area in the corner, and they got it back to him for the open J. Got to be able to move without the basketball if you're going to score a lot. Hager gets the first win. Nathan Berger is going to get in the game and replace Rodney Kaiser, who will take a break. Sean Hager with five points in the contest. He's averaging 11.1. Makes it two out of two, and now Bobby Keys will get in. Matthew Baker will check out. I think this is a big game also, Keith, for Shelby Valley, because you know now they've sort of dropped behind a little bit here, and... They need a good game for their confidence. Nathan Berger, pardon me, Chad Justice had it blocked. Bobby Keys puts it back up and in. Big bucket for the Valley there because at Belfry, been able to deny and come down and score. 15 points be pretty difficult here in the first half. Steve Staten off the glass. He has been hot as a firecracker in the first half. 12 points and both teams going at it real hard. Johnson having trouble with Phillips. Pass deflected. Justice. 
off the glass. Will it fall? Yes, it does for Chad Justice. 6-2 senior averages 11 points a contest. Couldn't get off the snide last night. J.J. Hilton in the lane. No good. Rebound fought for and won by Phillips. All the way down the baseline. Good move. Should have been about three fouls on that play and nothing called. Loose ball. Shelby Valley looking for it. Belfry diving for it and it's going to be out of bounds off of Sean Hager. I think it's going to belong to Shelby Valley. Well, I tell you, Mountain Classic action, Keith. You talk about the consolidate, the consolation game. Do they want it? You'd better believe it. Well, it's getting heated up, no doubt. Belfry, 35, Shelby Valley, 24. We'll be back in a moment. We at Citizens Bank and Trust Company of Jackson have built our reputation with Mountain people by serving Mountain people for the past. Well, Jim Dotson not playing in this game for the Belfry Pirates, and Jim, I'm sure that has a factor in the rebounding. 12-9 ad for Belfry, and look at Sean Hager go. I love this kid. Well, he might like you. <laughs> but that, that was a good steal. Hager picked him clean for the two points. Jamie Roberts rejected by Thomas. Here's Hilton down against Jeremy Johnson. Blew the layup. Fancy dribbling by Johnson. Off to Jamie Roberts. Blocked again by Thomas. Roberts gets it back, lays it up and in. Good second effort. I'm not so sure that you're going to see many consolation games played with this type of intensity. Both teams wanting it awfully bad. Hilton missed the put in. And Shelby Valley needs a good surge here, Keith. Belfry playing very, very tough. And uh, you know, we talked about the confidence factor. They had come along a little bit but a big blowout loss to Clay County and maybe a tough loss here might set them back a little bit. Pass in traffic stolen away. Hager off to Phillips. He's got the lay in. Sean Hager really knows how to run a fast break. Well, I would say I love that kid, but... No, you know. <laughs> Hager with another steal, and Phillips can't get it that time. He's not playing at 100% either. He's got the thigh bruise, but... He's got the big Valentine key. Three-pointer by Justice. No good. Keys with a rebound. And it is going to be an offensive push-off by Bobby Keys. You just went too fast for me, Jim. You skipped like, get to know, yeah. went straight to love. And <laughs> I'm a little old-fashioned, you know. One minute, 35 seconds. Belfry up by 13. Hilton for two if it goes. No good. Shelby Valley not doing a good job of blocking out that time, but it will belong to the Wildcats. Tell you, Belfry really hustling for all the loose balls. You know, you talk about Shelby Valley going to the zone that time. Belfry has had some problems the last couple of years with movement away from the ball against the zone. I think if you play man-to-man -man against this team, sort of play into their hands. Baseline, Justice, no good. Keys tried to tip it up, couldn't get it. Justice puts it back up and in. Chad Justice with four, had 18 in a tough loss to Pikeville and 12 in a big win over McGoffin County. And that was a big, big bucket there. Underneath, Browning all alone. Defensive breakdown. Wildcats switched up to an offense that time, and they simply lost their man. Got a good look there. Raymond Justice uh, is keeping the screws down tight. Foul on the baseline, belonging to Steve Staten. Scott may get a chance to interview him a little, a little later on in this game. Belfry just went awfully cold last night. Keith, in the game against Knott County, two of 21 from the three-point stripe. And, of course, I know a lot of those coming in a little bit of desperation in the second half, but still two of 21. Tough to overcome. Berger's second free throw is good. Oh, it's back to an 11-point game, 41-30. 
Neither team has really fired it up from the three-point land. If I'm correct, there's only one in the game belonging to Hager. Or is there one? That's one with Hager. What a great memory you've got, Key. I mean, well, you know. <laughs> they say elephants have good memories, and seeing as my head is close to that size. No, it's perhaps no, but no, uh, here we are. Good right. memory. Right. Elfrey going for the one shot. They'll let Hager try and create. Down to 12 seconds. Phillips forced it up, got it. Plenty of time left, though, if the Wildcats can get it in. This is 4-3 if it goes. Nope, the put back on the way, and still no is the answer. The Chad Justice had two opportunities, couldn't get it to go down, and at halftime, the Wildcats find themselves trailing Belfry 43-30. We'll return after this timeout. associates in Lacking. We're proud this year to be a sponsor of the WIMT Mountain Basketball Classic and support its academics and excellence through our scholarship contribution. Hello. I am at the WYMT Wayne Supply Mountain Classic sponsored this year by Pepsi and Jim. Quite a really a fast-paced ball game between Belfry and Shelby Valley. The Wildcats and the Pirates both opening up strong but Belfry forging ahead at one time by as many as 16 points. They did, Keith, and, you know, it's sort of a gut check time now for Shelby Valley. They're getting the good play inside. Bobby Keyes has seven points, the freshman Matthew Baker with eight, but the guard play is going to have to come on. Jeremy Johnson with just five points. He's playing the point guard. He's going to have to pick it up. He's the leader of this team. J.J. Hilton and Steve Staten, what a start he had. I'm sure the scouts.